So today I want to talk about visiting the Azores. The Azores are a series of uh, volcanic islands that are part of Portugal. So you're probably wondering, well, why should I go to the Azores? Um, the Azores offer stunning views. The coastline and the drives are really incredible. You'll also have an opportunity to see some marine life. The, the islands also feature a lot of really interesting geothermal features. I'm gonna spend time talking about some of the critical things you need to know to plan a trip out there. For our purposes, I'm gonna focus just on the main island of Sao Miguel, the provisional capital of Ponta Delgada is based, and target around two full days. So this is, this is not intended to be a super lengthy trip. This is a get in, see a lot of the really great things, and likely get out. Um, I'll mention a few other things that you can do to extend your time if, if you happen to have it. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. To get to the Azores, you have a number of travel options. Um, if you're coming from the United States, I would focus your efforts around looking at Boston or New York. In Canada, you can also fly directly from Toronto. If you're coming from Europe, you've got a whole host of other cities, predominantly from other Portuguese cities like Lisbon or Porto. Um, you can have a round trip ticket for as low as 50, 50 euros. Um, so it's really affordable coming in from Europe. Um, once you're once you're in Ponta Delgada in the Azores, you'll have an option to uh, continue on travel through a number of the other islands. Just like a lot of people use Iceland as a stopover point for their travels between the Americas and Europe, um, I'd encourage you to look at the Azores. Um, in many instances, a trip to the Azores can be had for no incremental money relative to flying directly to Europe. So let's talk about the travel seasons. What I found to be really interesting is there's something called seasonal lag, and that's effectively when you look at uh, the observed temperatures of a location relative to the positioning on the calendar. Um, and it turns out that the Azores actually have one of the lengthiest seasonal lags in the world, um, whereby when you experience weather in December, it's warm relative to the spring seasons. Now that all said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend spending time in the Azores in December. Um, your, your peak season is going to be concentrated around late spring, or early summer, all the way through around the early fall. There's a couple factors to consider here. Um, first and foremost, you're gonna want that warmer weather. The other factor is um, summer months are also great for marine life. If I had to have my perfect choice of the month, I'd pick June. Um, the, season to see whales is going to be in the um, late spring to early summer. Um, and then June's also when it starts to be a lot more sunny and your temperatures are gonna be on the warmer side. Um, the only drawback is um, you're not gonna be alone. So now that you're settled on how you're gonna get there and when to go, let's talk about logistics once you're on the island. Um, I'd highly recommend renting a car. You're going to love having the autonomy to go and explore throughout the island as you see fit. Really straightforward to pick up a rental car at the, uh, the airport. I would recommend getting a hotel room in Ponta Delgada. It's a really quick drive from the airport, um, and there's tons of lodging options. And what's also great about it is um, when you first arrive, you're probably going to want to get settled in and uh, go grab a bite to eat. Uh, the city is very walkable, so you'll have an opportunity to go around, explore, see different things, and uh, really find some uh, something great to eat. So now that you're settled in the Azores, let's talk about the first day. Your first stop that I'd recommend is going to Lagoa de Fogo. It's about a 30-minute drive from Ponta Delgada, and it is a lake inside a major stratovolcano uh, right in the center of the island. Before you go out, I would recommend checking some of the cameras that have been placed out there. You really never quite know what type of cloud cover you're dealing with on the islands. Um, and it'd be a real shame for you to plan around visiting there only to find out that uh, you really can't see anything and it's socked in the clouds. Once you've had a chance to take in all the views of the lake, I would recommend heading back towards Ponta Delgada and picking up some lunch. Uh, this will be a great stopping off point as you head out to spend the rest of your day on the west side of the island. Your first stop is going to be a lookout over the western caldera. It's certainly the most iconic picture that you'll see of the Azores. What's really special about it is you have two adjacent lakes that are different colors. You have the blue and green lakes. 
um, and a lot of it is attributable to the different mineral contents of these lakes. Um, as you're at the Overlook, one of the other things to, uh, uh, to think about is the abandoned adjacent hotel. You'll have to check what the, the latest conditions are upon your travel, but um, the last time I was out there, while it's not encouraged, a lot of tourists were accessing the, uh, the hotel. It's, uh, it is in a pretty, pretty bad state of disrepair, but once you're in, you get a chance to go up, um, take some really incredible pictures of the lake, um, and it's just a little bit of an eerie and interesting place to be in its own right. Definitely check it out, see what the situation is, and of course be smart. Once you wrap up, I'd recommend taking the car and driving right through the caldera, stopping as many times as you see fit, grabbing some incredible pictures, really enjoying your time. Um, and once you've had enough, grab your swimsuit. Um, you'll have a chance to go out on the far, far west side of the Calendera to the west coast of uh, San Miguel for a really unique treat. The coastline there actually has a geothermal spring that's sitting out in the Atlantic Ocean. And while for the most part, you're not gonna be comfortable swimming in any of the water around uh, the island, this is unique. If you catch the right tide, you're gonna have an opportunity to go out and experience some really warm water in a very special and unique area. Now comes the difficult part. You have to figure out how you wanna spend the end of your day. You can stay put and watch the sunset over the ocean. Alternatively, you can retrace some of your steps. Um, one of the go-to locations that I would recommend is Mirador da Boca de Inferno. Um, there's a little bit of a trail, but it leads you up to the top of the hill where you can see both of the lakes. From that point, you also have an opportunity to go back and see two different lakes, as well as an old aqueduct. Once you've had a chance to explore those different areas, um, it's going to be time to head back to town. For day two, I recommend an early start. This is the day you're going to want to go out on the water to see some marine life. The thing is, is tour operators don't start from Ponta Delgada. Uh, for that, you're gonna to need to do a 30 minute drive to Via Franca de Campo. From there, you'll have a few operators to choose from. Um, it's best to go out in the morning. The seas are often a lot calmer. Some people do struggle with getting seasick. I didn't necessarily have any issues, but it may be advisable to take some Dramamine or other type of medication beforehand just to ensure that you have a great time. If you happen to be out there during one of the peak seasons for marine life, you're going to have an opportunity to see whales and a ton of dolphins. Um, I was a little unfortunate when I was out there. I saw just a lot of dolphins. It was still really cool in its own right. And one of the added benefits is after finishing up the tour, you're going to have an opportunity to go around a crater that is formed on an island offshore. An incredible sight. You've probably seen pictures of this before and wondered where that was. And now's your chance to get a look at it. After your tour, um, it's the right season. There's also a small uh, ferry service that will carry people over to enjoy and spend some time on the beach. I didn't have time to do that, but one of the other things that I did do was there is a church on the hill just above the city. From that church, you've got a ton of incredible vantage points. You're able to see the hillsides, the ocean, and of course the crater right there. Um, and also in season, hydrangeas are everywhere there as well as across the island. The next destination is Furnace. It's about 30 minutes to the east, and this is where you're going to see a lot of the different hot springs. For modest fee, you can tour an area that features a number of steam vents, mud pots, geysers, really interesting uh, geothermal features. And I think one of the elements that's really unique about it is that the locals actually take advantage of the, uh, the heat in the earth to bury stew. And so it'll actually heat and cook that stew. Um, if you're interested in trying it, you'll have an opportunity to uh, tour and eat at one of the restaurants in Furnace. The most common restaurant for this is Terra Nostra. While in Furnace, one of the other popular things to do is visit a hot spring. One of the more notable ones is Boca da Donna Benja. This features a number of pools, changing rooms, showers. It's open really late till around 11 p.m. One of the other things I'll offer as a side note is there is a road that you can take that'll actually take you to a great vistage point over the adjacent lake.
Well, it would be easy to spend a full day in the furnace area. Um, I would recommend continuing on east. There's not necessarily a lot of uh, marquee attractions per se. It's more just an opportunity to really enjoy some stunning views, smaller towns, um, experience some of the coastlines. One of the other things that you can do on the east side of the island is go for a hike. One that's really caught my attention that I think is quite popular is Salto de Fuego. This is a beautiful hike that features a incredible waterfall at the end. You do elect to drive around the east side of the island. Do plan for around two hours to make the trip. Um, these aren't major highways. It's windy. It takes some time. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, I would say that once you've had an opportunity to spend the time going through all the different things that I've discussed here, it's going to be pretty close to the end of the day. Um, but as you're heading back to Ponta Delgada, I would recommend one restaurant through farm to table experience. It afforded me an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the local agriculture. These are really famous for the dairy production. As you're driving about the island, you're going to see a ton of cows. And so great opportunity to sample some of the cheeses. And there's another island called Pico, famous for its huge volcano. It's also a UNESCO heritage site and really unique because it has its own wine production where the vines grow on the ground. While you may not be visiting that island, um, you'll have a chance to sample some of its wines. So let's talk about budget. For this trip, I wouldn't anticipate you spending much over $1,000 for two people. Um, with that budget, I was able to book a rental car for under a hundred bucks. Lodging with parking was around $400 and another $150 per person for various experiences and dining. What are a few other things to think about? During my trip, I booked uh, an Airbnb experience where I had a tour guide take me out on some four by fours. That was a lot of fun. I got a chance to go down some uh, less uh, frequently traveled paths. I briefly touched on hiking. Go to the website, visit azores.com, and you'll find a ton of resources on different hikes throughout the island. If you happen to love fishing, that's another popular thing to do out in the Azores. A few other common activities include sailing, horseback riding, or visiting some of the farms. Um, you're going to find the only tea and pineapple plantations in Europe in the Azores. In terms of where to go next, you can extend your time and visit some of the other islands. It's always going to be a lot quicker if you schedule flights. There's not a lot of uh, rapid transit between the other islands by boats. Um, and then I think most importantly here is if you're going to make this trip, make sure you extend your trip and spend some time in Portugal. Um, it's just a truly incredible place um, and the two go together quite nicely. I'd love to hear about your travel experiences. Leave a comment, let me know whether this video has been helpful. If so, please like and subscribe um, and let me know what you think about the Azores. I'm looking forward to releasing more videos that cover places all over the world and I hope it helps you with getting inspired for your next trip. So if this trip wasn't perfect for you, stay tuned. Hopefully the next one will be.